What's up guys, my name is TechNumber here for Troubleshoot and today I'll be going through adding the Discord plugin to your Rust server and getting it to function properly. In this video we'll be covering multiple plugins, all related to the same thing, those being these ones on screen. Discord Core being the most important part to this because it is a multi-part plugin. This is where everything functions from and is the most important to get correct. Then we'll be going through Discord Chat, which syncs in-game chat with the Discord as such. This one over here, which I won't read due to demonetization, but you can see what it is. That'll be for syncing the PvP logs with the Discord. Of course, this isn't retroactive. It won't go into the past. However, while this plugin is running, it'll get sent to whatever channel you choose. Then I'll also be running through Discord Presence, which will be the bot showing up on the right hand side of Discord under the players list. You can of course give it a specific role and it will basically say right underneath it how many people are on the server and some information about it if you click on it. Super cool and really useful for setting up to your Rust server and I think it's a really important part that some servers are missing out on because some players might want to check the population of your Rust server without starting up their client or by possibly checking it from their phone through Discord. Super useful. Anyways, explanations aside, let's jump right into it. In my previous videos in this tutorial series, I've gone through multiple things, such as setting up FTP to transfer files, which is very important, as well as setting up and getting a remote console to work, Archon. If you'd like to find out how to do that, they'll be linked in the description down below. Of course, if you've got yours set up differently or you have a different method of doing things, then just try and stick along with this tutorial as close as possible and change it for your specific circumstance. So let's go ahead and start by downloading the core. This will be linked down in the description below, but it's umod.org slash plugin slash discord hyphen core. This is the most important part, which depends on a couple of things. This one over here, discord, and is used by these plugins over here, as well as quite a few more. So let's go ahead and open up this one in any tab, and we'll be downloading the core. We'll hit save, and you can see it in my downloads over here. As mentioned earlier, we'll also be downloading chat, this one over here, as well as presence. You can of course choose whatever you want, mix and match, but I won't be demonstrating them in this video. These are just the most important in my opinion. Download Discord chat, save. Download Discord PVP, we'll call it, save. And download Discord presence, save. As well as one more that I completely forgot about until later in this video, which is this one over here, which we'll simply call PVP notes, because again, of YouTube demonetization. Simply hit download, and then save. Now, because I'm recording this after this tutorial, you won't see me add it right up until close to the very end, but don't worry about it. Then the last one, which will be this one over here, Discord, is in fact an extension and integration. So it's not really a plugin as much as it is something separate. So here's where things get a little bit interesting. If we hit download, you can see it is in fact not a CS file, it is instead a .discord file. You can see this over here. Number one, shut down the server, open server files, etc, etc, but I won't be reading this because you can read it on the screen. You can see that it's downloaded incorrectly. To make sure, we'll go to view and make sure file name extensions is checked. So you can see it is in fact a Discord file. This is incorrect and it downloaded improperly. We'll add .dll to the end of it and it's now correct. Of course, if yours has this little icon and it actually says DLL as well as application extension under type, then it has downloaded correctly. Of course, because I downloaded it with Internet Explorer, it hasn't downloaded properly. That's besides the point. What we need to do is follow this guide over here. So open server files and navigate to managed. I'll be using FTP for this. We'll go into Rust dedicated data followed by managed. And this is where you'll be dragging and dropping that DLL we downloaded and made sure it was named correctly into. However, I have it hosted with game servers, so this isn't the way I'd be doing it. And as well, if you're hosting it on your local PC, you'd simply use the Windows File Explorer rather than some fancy FTP program like this. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now, and this is specific to game servers. So heading across to our main page, we'll go across to mods on the far right of our servers listing, and you'll see these over here. We have Discord extension v1.0.5 or whatever it is at the time of you viewing it. Install the latest version of the Discord extension. We'll be hitting install, OK, and our server will now shut down. If we tab into Rust, you should see that will disconnect shortly. There we go. And on the website, it says that it is currently locked. If we look at our Archon, it is lost connection. We'll have to click the X. And there we have it. We've now connected to the Rust server, meaning that it's fully restarted. Refreshing the page, going to mods, you can see the last plugin installed was the Discord extension. 
Great, it's now set up properly. As you may or may not have noticed, absolutely nothing happened to our Discord server because we haven't even invited the bot at this point and we haven't even configured it. So what's next? Heading back to the Discord installation folder, scrolling up to the top, you can see these headings up here, getting API key and plug an example. Let's head to getting your API key. So this is for setting up the actual bot itself. Head across to this link over here, which will also be linked down in the description below, which will require you to log into your Discord account, which should have admin on the Discord server you're trying to add the bot to. Once you've gone to that link and signed in, you'll see a page similar to this. Of course, if you haven't created bots in the past, they won't be listed here at all. We'll be heading to new application on the top right, and we'll go ahead and give it a name. So I'll name it example bot create and there we go here's where you can name it again give it a profile picture but of course you don't have to do any of this this is purely just aesthetics then once you're on this page over here and you've set up everything to your liking you'll be heading across to the bot tab on the left hand side and you'll be clicking add bot note this is irreversible for this one that we just created if we want to change it back we'll have to create a new one in the future but of course we'll hit yes do it there we go then we'll see this appear then you'll see token over here which we'll be clicking a copy for of course, you don't want to give this to anyone because if someone abuses this, this will get your account punished. Scrolling down to the very bottom, you only need one of these ticked. And that is administrator, which gives it permissions for absolutely everything. If you want to give it permissions through a role on your Discord server, you can leave this unchecked. Though, of course, if you don't want to go into creating roles, you should leave it checked over there. Then once that's done, we can go back to our FTP or to the folder where it's installed. We'll be heading into Oxide, Config. Once you've done that, you should open up a notepad file somewhere on your computer and paste in your bot token. I'm going to make it nice and small so that you can only see a portion of it. So I'll go ahead and put that somewhere accessible. Next up, looking back at our FTP or the folders where it's installed, going into config, you'll notice nothing new. Oxide, config, refreshing, you'll notice nothing new here. And that's because we don't actually use this bot token with the extension that we added. Note that it's only used for these plugins. That being said, Discord Core is where we'll be putting it. So we'll go into Oxide, Plugins, and we'll be dragging and dropping Discord Core into it. Looking over to our Archon, you should see that Discord Core was compiled successfully, loaded, and it asks you to enter your API key and reload the plugin. Of course, if this doesn't pop up, you'll be typing in Oxide.load space Discord Core, capital D, capital C. Note that this matches the plugin file itself which is this one over here. Then we'll hit enter and it should load. Great, now that we've done that, we'll navigate in our FTP or folders into the Oxide config folder, refresh, and we'll see Discord core. So let's simply navigate on our local PC into the correct folder and drag and drop it out of our server. Of course, if you're doing this locally, you won't need to drag and drop it anywhere. Then I'll go ahead and open it with something like Notepad and here's where we'll be pasting it in. So of course I'll have to blow this out and I will be deleting this bot once this tutorial is done. Where it says Discord API key, we'll go ahead and paste it in there. Bot guild ID, this is the ID of the server you wanted to join. So how exactly do we find that? Open up your Discord, navigate to the correct server. Then we'll simply right click on the server and go copy ID. If you don't see that option, in the bottom left, go into user settings, followed by appearance, Scrolling down, advanced developer mode, make sure that's on. Then again, right click on your server picture, copy ID. Then we'll paste that in here where it says bot guild ID. Inside of those inverted commas, discord join code. This is of course an invite link to your server. Go ahead and paste in an invite link to your server. Then enable commands in bot channel, I've got set as true. And if you have that set as true, it'll only work in one channel where you can execute commands. So specifically, you should be using an administrator only or moderator only chat on your Discord server. And then down here, you'd enter either the channel name or the channel ID. And I'd recommend using the ID. How do you get that? Well, heading into Discord, we'll make a new chat. Once you've made a channel that you're comfortable with, right click on it, copy ID. Then we'll be pasting it in here where it says bot inside of the inverted commas, just like that. From here, we can go ahead and save, and there's not much else we need to change in this file. So now we can close out of it, and if you downloaded it from an FTP server, you can simply drag and drop it back onto it and overwrite the settings. Great. From here, you won't need your Discord bot token anymore, so we can go ahead and minimize that or close it entirely. From here, we'll be heading back to our Archon and typing in oxide.reload space Discord, capital D, core, capital C. Enter. There we go, it's reloaded. As you can see, the message that popped up earlier about loading default config, and please enter your Discord API key, has now changed. 
Then at the bottom here, you'll see this pop up. Discord socket opened, which means the plugin is successfully working. And if you see this message over here about failed to find a matching guild, you'll need to make sure that the bot is actually in your server. I forgot to do this, but of course it doesn't matter if you missed it at this point. All you need to do is look in the description down below for something that looks similar to this. If you're going to be using roles to give your bot permissions, you can get rid of and permissions at the very end, but because I just wanted to have administrator by itself, remember eight means administrator, I'll leave it at that. Then client ID, we need to go back to our Discord bot, go to general information, and click copy under client ID. We'll paste it in there, and then we'll go ahead and actually visit this link. You'll see something similar to this. We'll choose a server we want to invite it to, and we'll hit authorize. We'll prove we're not a robot, and done. We can now close out of that tab, and heading back to our Discord, you can see that it joined the server. Great. Looking on the right-hand side, you can see example bot is currently running. Great, that means that Discord is set up properly and working. Looking over to our Rust Archon, we'll simply type in the same command or hit down to go to the previous one, the down arrow key, and hit enter. It'll reload, bot will go offline, and it'll come back online in a couple of seconds. Bot found in one guild, and Discord connected to server followed by your Discord server name. Awesome, we've got that working. Now that we've got the Discord core set up and working, let's go ahead and set up the rest of the plugins over here. So I'll go back a folder, into the plugins folder, and I'll go ahead and drag and drop a Discord chat, Discord that word, and Discord presence. Drag and drop, and we've now put them all into our server. Back a folder, config, and I'll be editing these one by one. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop chat, that word, and presence out onto my local PC for editing. So let's start with Discord presence because it's probably the most interesting one. We'll open it up with something similar to Notepad, and you'll see this over here. It's simply one setting, which is the name on the left hand side, followed by what it's set to. And that is basically all that this plugin is. If we look back at our Discord, you can see that it now says playing on server name 0 out of 50 or however many people are on your server. So let's go ahead and change what that says. So we'll change it from on server name to being something different. Now, of course, you can set it to anything you want. However, just keep in mind that bracket players, bracket means the current players on the server, and max players means the maximum amount of players that can join the server. Those are currently the only two special options that you get to mess around with. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to something different. I'm not going to have the server name because the bot will be named the same as the server. It'll simply just say how many players are on the server out of maximum players, brackets players. So if we hit save, close our editor, either hit yes to sync it with it, or if you're hosting it locally, you'd simply just make sure to copy it, overwrite it, done. You'll see looking back in Discord, absolutely nothing has changed. That's because we need to go back to our Archon, type in oxide.reload, space Discord, capital D, presence, capital P. Make sure you spell this correctly, and hit enter. There we go, successfully compiled, unloaded, loaded, and you can see that it suddenly changed to exactly what we set it to be. So playing zero out of 50 players. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get to these other two plugins, the PVP one that I mentioned, as well as chat. So I'm opening up the chat one first. I'll go edit. And you see this over here. Chat channel name or ID is of course the channel that we'll be syncing the in-game chat with. So looking in Discord, we'll sync it with 5x chat. We'll right click, copy ID, and we'll paste the ID in right over there. Hit save because that's basically all that we need to do. Over here is extra things for setting it up so that it doesn't sync commands or admin only messages. But of course, because we don't have a plugin like that installed, I wouldn't be messing around with that and I'm not too familiar with it. If you'd like to find out more about that, I'd recommend checking the UMod page or Googling for more information. So close and I'll simply drag and drop it back in, overwrite, and we need to go and reload the plugin. So oxide.reload. Discord chat. It's not spelled correctly. Now it is. Great. Now that that's set up, you'll see the channel that you set it to wipe if you're setting up a new config on a new bot. Of course, if it's not the bot that sent the messages, it'll go ahead and delete them one by one until the channel is clean. Of course, if you want to stop it, you'll have to run oxide.unload discord core. That'll stop it right wherever it is, and it won't continue. Next up, I'll be setting up the discord that word, right click edit, and simply we just enter the channel that we want it to go to in here. So you get it by now, right click on the channel we want it to go to, copy ID, paste it in, save it, and make sure we overwrite it on the server. Done. And here comes future me to tell you about something that I forgot to add in here when I was originally recording it. As you may not remember, in the beginning of the video, I asked you to download not only this Discord PvP one, but as well as PvP notes, which are also linked in the description down below. 
Here's where I forgot to actually upload it to my server, which led to 20 minutes of not understanding why the plugin is not working. So we'll go back out of the config folder, we'll go into the plugins folder, and then we'll simply go ahead and drag that PVP notes plugin that we downloaded into the right hand side, and then we're basically done with that. If we go back a folder, config, refresh, you'll see that there is a settings file for it. And if we go ahead and edit that, there's nothing in here that we need to change. We can leave this as is. Of course, if you want to change victim was, you know, by that person with their that thing over a distance of distance. You can go ahead and customize these to your liking. <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't say most of those words due to the AI on YouTube demonetizing videos that contain them. Rant aside, there's nothing we need to do in this file, so you don't even need to bother downloading that pvpnotes.json file. Awesome, that's about it. Of course, we need to go and reload this plugin in order for it to work. Tapping back into Discord, you'll notice nothing changing. And of course, from here, I've gone and unloaded the actual Discord plugin. As you can see, the bot is offline. I did that using oxide.unload Discord core, and we'll need to be loading that again to get it to work. Why did I do that? because I don't want the chat logs getting wiped for the server that we've been running for a short while. Of course, minor mistake, but I've now set it up to work with the actual bot that we'll keep using. And this bot over here, I'll be deleting shortly after this tutorial. So that being said, let's simply go oxide.load discord core. Then we'll go oxide.reload discord that word. And of course, if you change settings for that PVP notes plugin, you'd also be running oxide.reload space that plugin's name. So looking back here, the bot is currently online and we've got these two chats over here. So let's go ahead and demonstrate it. I'll go ahead and join the server. I'll wake up and I'll go ahead and say something in chat. Tapping back to Discord, you can see that I joined the server and I said something. Of course, if you're on the Discord server and you're one of the players, if you type something in chat, it'll automatically be deleted by the bot. Whether you're a super admin, you created the server, or you're just a normal user, your messages will get deleted. Only the bot's messages are permitted in this channel. There we go, we've connected to the server, everything's running good. Let's just quickly go ahead and game end ourselves with some style. Ya yeet. There we go, now that we've game ended, We'll respawn and simply tab into the Discord. As you can see in chat, it says that we've successfully connected. And under that PvP logs channel, you can see that I game ended myself using their F1 grenade. Cool, so it's working exactly as expected, and that's good. Awesome, so now we know that's set up properly. So anyways, that's about it. Pretty quick tutorial for what it actually contains. I hope you found this helpful in at least a few ways. For me, this video would have been extremely important to see. However, I had to figure everything out myself. That being said, remember this is part of an ongoing series. So remember to go ahead and check that out. A link in the description down below There's a playlist link, as well as a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Anyways, my name is Bean Technoba here for Troubleshoot. I hope you found this video useful in at least a few ways, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.